Dearest Debbie, Laura May, and Rita, it isn't easy to leave a town like our town, to tear myself away from you three dear, dear friends who've meant so much to me. And so I consider myself extremely lucky to be able to take with me a sort of memento. You see, girls, I've run off with one of your husbands, Addie. Deborah didn't happen to mention why Brad had to go to the city, did she? He hasn't missed a Saturday on that golf course since they got the snow off the greens. I told that blasted girl I wanted to cool it on soft, making me look even more like a farmhand than I feel. Because he's ashamed in front of his friends, ugly and pinned up, drunk and sick. Maybe because it might keep you from wondering why George dressed up on Saturday with no school. Why didn't George go fishing? Why the blue suit? Why does everything have to be full when guests arrive? The same tuxedo that for some strange reason you want me to wear tonight. This time, also present will be two advertising moguls who happen to employ you. Their presence means a new uniform for Sadie, hmm? and all the pomp and hysteria usually reserved for coronations. I call that pretense. I am fed up with taste and discrimination. I'm fed up with Addie Ross. I don't know whether Porter ran off with Addie, but get this, I don't care. I've got everything I want. You haven't got everything you wanted after all. Anybody wants me can come in and get me. This ain't a drive-in. It's an old act. You're good at it, but you don't fool me. And I know all the answers. Did you ever stop to think, Porter, that in over three years, there's one word we've never said to each other, even in fun? To you, I'm a cash register. You can't love a cash register. If you'd only ask me, if you'd only made me feel like a woman instead of a piece of merchandise. My husband has run away with Addie Ross. Bingo!